you're on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. My name is Liz. I am part of your human res human resources team here on board the Carnival Valor. Thank you for joining me today to ways to respond to a person in crisis. We all know that at some point in life, someone will come to us in crisis. It can be really difficult to respond to someone with a really difficult situation. So if a team member comes to us with a crisis, it's really important that we know how to respond and do it effectively. So I'd love to hear, who has had a friend or family member have a crisis in their life? Just recently. Right, okay. And when that crisis happened, did they come to you? Great, great. We'd love to hear, what, what some of those situations, uh, what did it look like if someone would like to share? I would love to. Yes, uh, please uh, share. It was uh, just recently happened to the board. There was one uh, woman, a team member, she went and she lost all the money for all her contract on the card and just her account was hacked. And, uh, she had so many problems back home, so she had she was crying and she was so stressed. She didn't eat three days. And it's very hard to find the words, to be honest, to tell the person who lost money for seven months and who has loans and two kids. Um, that everything's going to be all right. Oh my gosh, so she, yeah. so she went to you? Yes. Wow. Yes. And how did you respond? Uh, I told her that uh, um, that from my side, she can rely on me and talk anytime and, uh, as well. So we're going to contact the master and uh, he's going to contact the company and they will investigate and will definitely find out what happened. And, uh, so far, yeah. So everything we can do is to try to calm down, you know, to kill ourselves, you know, to stress ourselves. But however, if she needs any support, personal support, she can always suggest to me. Wow, great. You, just, you are very quick to respond. Great. And I saw a couple other people. Um, who else has experienced something where a person has come to in crisis? I saw another hand go up. Yes, Erin. Um, it's, it's a crisis in my family. Actually, it's happening right now. My niece is a junior in high school and she's a nationally ranked runner and her boyfriend's in college and now she wants to give up running completely and like follow him. So my sister's sending me messages because she knows I'm here asking me if I can talk to her and because she's refusing to talk to everyone else in my family. So to me, that's a crisis situation. Oh, huge, huge, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I haven't dealt with it yet, so I'm trying to figure out in my head what I'm going to do to talk to her. Great, I'm so glad you're here today because <laughs> yeah. that's what we're doing. Which is great because in front of you, you all have a handout with our notes today. So please feel free to read. Um, this is your resource. So write on it, take notes. Everything is on here for that takeaway for you. So Erin, tell me just a little more about that. So this is a um, situation at home. Yeah. Your sister wants you to talk to your niece. So this sounds like it'll be great. Have you spoken, and you haven't spoken with your niece yet? I called her the other day, but the, she was doing homework. So she's supposed to call me tonight. So I'm wondering, are you thinking about what questions to ask? Yeah, I have no clue. Great. Good. How to res good. How to respond. So great. Sounds like we've got, we have, and I think what's great about this topic is that you can all see life on board ships is a challenge. Would you agree? Yes. yes. Great. Does life continue on land? Yes. And does Christ, yes. and also too, does crisis happen on ships? Yes. yes. And does it happen on land? Yes. yes. Absolutely. So we got to learn how to do that effectively. Thank you for sharing those examples. So let's go through these steps. And again, these are right in front of you. So I love, I love it when our um, we have group discussions. So I invite you to contribute. It makes it more enjoyable for everyone. So what, uh, from what you know so far of our discussion, what do you think that first step would be? Listen. Excellent. Good. When we listen, what does it look like? Look. Eye contact. Looking. Good. I heard someone say I. Eye contact. I contacted, and Esther, what were you going to say? Okay, I was going to say I contact. Uh, we show with our body, we turn to the person with our body. Good. Okay. Perfect, nailed it. Mm. So let's go through this a little bit more deeply. What is What does appropriate eye contact look like? Yeah, Esther, no. yes, thank you. Okay, so when if somebody tells you they have a problem, if immediately they say maybe my 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 husband is sick, and you're like you turn away. That means that 
shows that you're not willing to listen. But if you face them and look at them, then that allows them to know that now um, you have my attention. Mm. Go on talking. Perfect. Yeah. Esther just said two really good points. Uh, the appropriate is by showing someone that you're looking at them, it shows care and concern. The second part of what Esther shared with us is the opposite. Yeah. When we look away, it shows disinterest. Yeah. Possibly, well, what else could it show by not looking at the person? You're, you're unprepared. Yes. Unprepared, and I heard Aaron say preoccupied. Great. How about body language? What does what does appropriate body language look like? Be <laughs> open. You have to be open. And not to turn turn to the person in his direction. Yes, showing that you are giving yeah. full attention while turning our body towards the person. Exactly. I hear all of you say it. it shows full attention. It shows your presence. Exactly. Great. Good. What do you think we would do after we listen? What would our next step? We will ask. ask. Great. What is it? What is it we're asking? Um, I feel like you're asking first of all to understand and to gain clarity of the situation. Exactly. Right. So, just being able to say somebody, for example, let's use Erin's case. Probably when what she wants to find out is from her niece, maybe something her niece is trying to communicate with everybody else, but they're all not asking the right questions or being able to clarify what is going on. Exactly. So just wanting to ask, to clarify, and to understand what is needed. Exactly. As to two great points from that, clarifying and understanding what's going on. What other things are we wanting to get from that information by asking questions? All we can work. Exactly. Say more about that, Rita. Uh, understanding the situation help us to see the full picture and we can identify what, how we can assist and be better, yeah? again, effectively. And uh, we're going to also see uh, what the person is expecting from us that. So what we can do and what he wants us to do. Another great point, exactly. What is it you need? Sometimes, a, a big reason too that we're, um, we're listening and then asking is because sometimes our natural instinct is we know the answer, we want to fix it, or we're problem solvers, right? But if we're listening for the right questions, it can be something totally different. So really good point, Rita. How about that? In addition to how can I help, what else? And you, I, you went towards this, Rita, but I want to hear a little more. Um, what else are we at? No, you're, no, you are right on with it. Appreciate your contribution. What else? What else are we listening for um, by the questions we ask? What is it we're asking? What that person needs to be assisted. Yeah, Miguel, say a little more about that. Well, we need to. We have to try to find out what the needs of that person are at that moment, so we can help them. Now that we have already asked, how can I help? We need to know how we can help. Exactly. And to do that, we need to know their needs. Exactly. Perfect. 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 Excellent. What is our third step? What do you think? After knowing their needs, mm -hmm. there comes action. Action. What does action look like? They're going to respond. So responding and action, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Offering assistance if you can. Yeah, yep. And Aaron, if you can, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, once they tell you what they need, if you're able to actually help them get what they need, then you can, but if not, you can guide them to a resource that can help them. Good. So that the can, exactly what Aaron is saying, is appropriate. Because sometimes the resource, too, of what, of the what or the how we want to fix it, it may not be within our means. Mm -hmm. um, so the appropriate, if we can, if we can do that. Really good point there. Good. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a big consideration because sometimes 
we also may know the answer or know how to help, but it's not within our means to, to, be, to be the fixer, you know? So um, guiding them to the resource, but also having them take responsibility mm -hmm. of how to ne negotiate whatever they need to fix the problem. Good, good, good. Great. So if I may, I would love for a volunteer um, to come practice with me. I'm going to take you through this. So I'm going to give you the example. I'm looking for a friend from the crew bar. Miguel, did I see you raise your hand? I did. <laughs> I right, come join me in the front. Miguel, thank you for being my volunteer. So we are hanging out at the crew bar. And uh, Miguel, you came to join me. You said, hey, let's have a cocktail. And I said, sure. So we're sitting here at the crew bar. And we're at the bar top like this. And uh, we're having a cocktail. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, Miguel, what's going on tonight? Actually, here, we'll just face on it so they can see it. So, um, what's going on tonight? How was your day? Uh, not that great. Not no. that great? Why? What's going on? I just received some news from home, some very disturbing news, you know. Um, fortunately, it seems that my father has a, has a very big disease, and it's not, it's not doing well. I'm really, really concerned about this. Oh my gosh. So you wow, what do you know so far about yeah. what's going on? I still don't know much, but it's when he's done at the hospital, he has been diagnosed they diagnosed they diagnosed him with some kind of cancer. I don't even really know what type it is because I got so you know, so 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 concerned that I didn't even listen to everything. I just when the word cancer it me everything went black, you know. Oh my gosh. That must yeah, that must be really stressful. Yeah, it is, wow. it is. And now I don't know what to do. So what um what do you want? What do you yeah, want but I really wanted to is to be there with him, you know, but how am I going to manage that? I'm here at the ship at the middle of the sea. How am I going to do that? Right. So you're thinking you're like you wanna go home to be with him? Yeah, that's what I really Yeah, you think you want to go home. Okay. Yeah, so I'd love to help. You know I'm in human resources. Yeah, that's precisely Yeah, and exactly. If, if I could even book your ticket, I would book. I'm not in a position to do that, but what I could do is just down the hall, mm -hmm. um, across from where I am, the CTC is the crew office. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know the MSA, she's an important person to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, but first, actually, I would say talk to your supervisor to let them yes. know you're looking at going home. Yes, right, as in, sure. this, is a cr this is a crisis. Yeah. Your father's sick. Um, I would start with that, and then the crew office. Um, her name is Michelle, the MSA. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. yeah. Okay. So I'd start with those two things, but know that um, I'm so glad you came to me because I want to help. I'm here for you. I'm your friend. And I'd start with those two things. And um, how about like tomorrow night? Let's grab another drink and just hear how it goes. Yeah. I'm here for you. Thank you. Thank you for the advice. Of I'll course. Advice. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Have a good night. I'll see you later. See you. Okay. Bye. All right, so that's what it looks like, um, how I guided through, um, guided me all through it. So as you saw, a couple things I want to point out that I did. First, we were sitting next to each other. I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, but then I turned, so I'm looking at him. I turned, so I'm looking up my eyes. I turned my body, here's my body language, I'm asking, I'm, I'm gathering information from the questions, and then I responded uh, with going to your supervisor and then MSA, and also I'm here for you. So that's what it looks like kind of take take through those steps. Um, and I'd love to have someone practice with me. You want to practice? Oh, Esther? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so how about, um, how about um, what I was thinking of, we just uh, had a, unfortunately, a recent shooting. So I'm going to, um, you are my friend. And how about we're in the same, we're in the same place. How about that, the crew bar? So okay. we're sitting, we're in the crew bar and, um, and I came to you. And so you're going to kind of practice. And we'll just kind of go through this. We'll practice this together. Sound good? All right. Great. OK. So Esther, I got a pretty scary uh, email that my neighbor back at home was in the shooting uh, in Vegas. And she was at the concert. Uh, I love country music. She is too. And um, whew, she's going to be OK, but she's still in the hospital. It was pretty serious, her injury is. I'm stuck here. I can't. I can't go home because there's nothing I can do. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. Um, 
have you been able to speak to them or you just no not yet it's just email just email okay now how can I help you do you need any help I just I wish I could talk to her just to know she's okay okay um, do you know that we have uh, you can go to the HR team and they'll be able to assist you with the phone cut because I know if you're able to speak to them then at least it will ease you yeah, and also be able to assist you to yeah. focus on what you need to do to assist your neighbor because I'm sure if it's your neighbor that somebody is close to you yeah, yeah. right mm -hmm. so um, what I would suggest is you can go to the HR team we always have they have um, a program that enables us when we are in crisis to be able to communicate with those who are at home okay so you can go to the HR team and if you need somebody to listen to talk to once you're able to speak to them feel free to come and see me anytime my schedule I'm free always all evening so we can always catch up wow perfect she nailed it so let's debrief with um, with Esther here mm. so first thing what Esther did we're sitting here and I noticed I could see her presence turn so I was purposely kind of like this and she did she turned right to me she looked at me so Esther did that she turned to me she looked at me her body language is towards me even though even though I stayed a bit like this I gave her a little bit and went towards her because that's natural human behavior it's kind of hard to keep your children anyways naturally did that she asked her that for me then right away what was really cool is she quickly got that information just within we talked for about two minutes and really quickly she went through that listening what do you want I just want to talk to her boom she went there right away did you know that in crisis situations we can use our HR department to call home really and then responded super easy hey I'll take you there our HR department and they're there to help and I'm a friend I can let you know or I can be there for you so round of applause Esther well done Thank you. good excellent so it's very quickly quick too so when you think about responding to a person in crisis and how to do it effective man that was effective and efficient you know it doesn't have to be this long drawn out conversation you, you can go through those steps relatively quickly if you have more time of course have a lengthier discussion but it can be something really even quick just like that so let's go through you know I'd like to hear too though from you Esther how did that feel um usually when somebody tells me they have a crisis I tend to go like oh no what do I say how do I what do I do immediately I'm thinking about me 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 but then I think with this course with what I just practiced right now and what you taught is that now I know it's about them yep. to first listen and then to know the questions to ask which is okay right but at that time that person is seeking assistance so just be able to go through my mind and see what kind of crisis it is and what solutions are available and just be there excellent so I felt much better great you discussed it excellent my yeah. other question to you our goal for today was to see if you can demonstrate how to effectively respond so what do you all think you saw Esther her, her response what do you all think did she was she efficient and effective in her response yeah, absolutely good. great good excellent so let's let's kind of recap what we talked about today so our three main ways to respond to a person in crisis first we want to listen we do that through our eye contact our body language that's how we're listening next we're asking questions we're seeking information to understand what's going on we do that through asking questions like how can I help what do you need we're gathering information asking those questions then we respond we respond by saying what we're going to do and also if, if it's appropriate or if we can help if it's in our means how to do that excellent with that Thank you so very much for your time. We will now take a break.